okay so now i'm starting the recording okay so we haven't missed a lot of parts so that is still fine only the basic explanation okay so this is like a normal loop okay so first part is the condition so if the condition is true then it will come inside that is the purpose of condition so it determines the entry criteria okay whether the execution will enter the loop or not okay so let's say that is determined now after that we have a scope of the loop so it will determine what all code will be executed if this condition becomes true so this condition can be either true or it can be false okay so you have to put a boolean expression inside this it cannot have any string expression or any any expression which results in anything other than true or false it has to result in a boolean expression okay so for that the logical operators that we have uh, seen i mean uh, you guys have uh, were asking the question regarding the logical operator the link i pinged so you can check out those logical operators using and operator or operators okay not operators less than equal to greater than equal to those operators you can use to create a conditional statement uh, which will result in a true or false okay so you cannot have a resultant as any other data type apart from boolean okay so it can take only two values this true or false okay all right so that's about condition now the scope is pretty simple whatever you write inside that will be executed multiple times now after that you also have something called uh, change so change is the increment or decrement whatever you do you do plus plus or maybe minus minus whatever method you use to change the condition the condition has to change if it's if it stays forever the same then it will become an infinite loop which will throw you an exception okay okay so that is about it and then how it is determined first let's say this line was executed then in this line then it came to this condition it saw that there's a condition there's a loop here it will check the condition if it's true it will enter this scope and it will execute the lines one by one okay once it comes here then the increment or decrement should happen if the increment or decrement is happening that the condition then that means condition is changing in that case again it will jump from here to the condition and it will check whether the condition is being true or not if it's still true then again it, again it will come inside if it's false then it will jump back to the next line okay so all this line or the execution of line this is handled uh, handled by the pointers okay so which where should it jump or which line it should execute all that is handled by pointers we don't have to get in that much detail okay okay so that is the basics about it okay now let's see what are the types of uh, loop we have and what are the syntax okay all right so let's jump to our developer console okay so i'll just uh, demonstrate here itself let me show here okay so first we will see a while loop okay so how while loop will work while loop when you create a while loop after the creating the while statement you write while statement first then you put one condition here you give one condition whether it should be true or false okay so condition we will give condition will be a formula which will evaluate to either true or it will be false okay so once you have put the condition then you have the scope okay and there's no separate section to uh, provide any kind of uh, change that means increment or decrement you have to do that manually if you don't do that manually if you don't put that inside the loop then it will become infinite okay which should not be uh, used okay it's a bug it's a it's a it's a defect you should not be doing that okay which will slow down your resource as well as any other resource and you will hit the governor limit in the end okay so that is about it so in the code inside the scope we have to do some kind of i plus plus or j plus plus or maybe minus minus some way we have to change this condition to make it false at the end of the time or some 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 time okay so inside this only we have to write the increment or decrement whatever change we want to do okay so first let's say this line was getting executed it will come the execution from 97 98 99 9, 500 so once it checks that there is a while condition then it will check the condition whether it's resulting in true or false so let's say if it results in true okay so here we'll put let's say true then it will come inside the loop okay once it comes inside the loop whatever is there in the loop that will be executed okay inside or we can say entering 
so uh, it's not for while loop okay and one thing also you have to remember that while loop is an entry controlled loop what's an entry control loop entry control loop that means where while entering into the loop we are checking the condition it's not checking the condition while exiting it's not checking at the end it's checking in the beginning so when it's trying to enter the execution is trying to enter the loop that is when the condition is checked so that's why it's called entry control loop okay so while is an entry control loop okay so let's check it out and let's see uh, what happens let's try to execute and so that means our syntax is correct it's trying to send a request and and it is an infinite loop actually that is an infinite loop so see it's just sending the request continuously it's not even ending so in the end it will throw an exception maybe timeout or something else okay so that we have created an infinite loop because the condition will always be true and always it will be keep on uh, doing system dot debug okay so you guys got this point is this clear yes okay all right so if you see apex cpu time limit existed so it has executed so many times 502 times it has executed and it the heap memory finished off and then it throws an exception so we have a guest here a guest member okay so all right please welcome her okay okay so let's continue so this is a while loop and this became a infinite loop so in this inside this loop somewhere we have to make it as false okay so as this there's no variable here we can't make anything false it will always be true only okay so we have to need one variable to make it true or false okay so that we'll check let's say uh, integer i equals to let's say we'll keep it as true first okay oh oops what am i doing so we have boolean here okay boolean i is equal to true and here we'll just use our i okay or we can also say uh, name it as flag which will be more appropriate so you can say as flag so while flag is equal to true it will always check we, we can also say something like while flag double equals to true okay so here we are comparing these two and this is a comparison operator okay double equals to is a is a comparison operator and it's checking whether flag equals to true or not it will check from right to left okay it will check whether these two on the either side of the operand of the operator both the operands are same or not if both of them are same then it will enter the loop if it's for if it's not same that means it is resulting to uh, false so it will not come inside it will come directly here and the next line will be executed okay so we don't have to do something like this we can also just say flag okay so it will check whether flags value is true or not so as of now flags value is true and we are not changing anywhere okay so once we are done somewhere in uh, in the end of the line we have to change the flag to false okay so as this is just a demonstration i will just make it as false here okay so once i make it as false then the loop will be ended okay and it will come out of the loop so you can say system dot debug and exit in the loop okay when we execute this now we should get uh, two logs one from inside the loop and one from the outside the loop okay so that was just a very basic example it should not be something like this so what we can do is we can initiate or we can instantiate one variable we can say integer let's say i equals to we can say maybe 10 okay and it will be something like this so as long as i is less than uh let's say 15 okay or we can start with i equals to 1 itself okay as long as i is less than let's say 5 okay so as long as this condition is true it will enter the loop okay and here we can give a system dot debug and um, we can say maybe value of i equals to we can say let's say i okay and here we have to increment it so what we can do is we can do i 
plus plus okay so this is an increment operator it will increase the value of the i by one okay pretty simple and as its uh, condition will become false once the value of i is uh, equal to five so if we want it to generate a number from one to five then we have to give equals to also so then it will uh, iterate from one to five okay so the value of the i will change from one to five okay so when it becomes greater than five then this loop uh, this condition will become false and will exit the loop and then it will come here okay exiting the loop all right so we can also so but we are taking less than equal to great yeah so while inside this it should be true only then this will be executed so is it is it true as of now or not no it will take five also no it will take five also yes it will take five also okay okay now after that after uh, let's say uh, i value is five okay so once it becomes five then again it will come inside it will do this debug and then it will come to i plus plus so once it increases from five it will become six so here the value of five okay. will become six and come out will, this loop yeah and then it will come here from here it will jump back to the condition it will check whether it's true or not so i is less than equal to five which is six less than equal to five which is false so once it becomes false it will come to the next line okay sir. okay 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 so let us execute and let's see so i'll just remove these comments mm. all right let's remove this okay when we execute this so now we should get uh, five times the iteration should happen and should generate like logs for five times okay and the value is changing from one two three four five why it's changing because we are uh, using a change operator here which is increment operator so plus plus okay in the reverse way also we can do let's say we have five and here if we say uh, as long as i is greater than or equals to one okay and in this case here we have to do i minus minus so we are coming from 5 to 1 okay so this will also work it depends on um, your logic or your requirement okay so now it will come from reverse way okay 5 4 3 2 1 and then it will exit the loop okay both of them both the examples are pretty same it's just that we are coming from the uh, increment we are decrementing here we are not incrementing in the previous case we were trying to increment it okay okay any questions so far sir we can use i minus also i minus we are in which i minus or i plus single minus actually minus minus you are taking i plus plus you are taking okay so there this operator cannot work because this is a subtraction operator okay for subtraction operator we need two operands okay so there are only few operators which need single operand you know operand and operator right so yes, whichever yes, yes, yes. so whichever is the operator which is doing the calculation like plus minus those are operators and on the left hand side whatever is there and the right hand side those are operands okay so there are only few operators which work on single operand here we have only one operand right so subtraction actually takes two operand on the left side uh, left side and also on the right side so according to you i mean what should this particular operator do no i'm asking just before i if we will take plus i so it will work or not no it will not work okay fine we can use something like plus plus i okay okay and we can also use something like minus minus i so there's something called post increment and pre increment so this is pre increment that means the i value will be used first and then it will be changed okay so if we debug the log here okay if we put a system dot debug here so the value of i will already have been like changed here or if we do something like uh, let's say if we add it here okay so in this case first the increment will happen okay that is called pre increment so first increment will happen then it will uh, display uh, use the value okay so here it will already be uh, changing to 4 or whatever increment it is happening so here it became a little confusing minus minus 1 let's say it's a minus minus i 
okay let me comment this part okay so here it will already change the value uh, to 4 okay so that is pre increment that means it's changing the value first after that the i uh, i variable is used okay so same thing happens in pre increment also so it will increase the value of i first then it will print the value or use the value of i okay now if in case we have something like post increment okay in this i value will be used first and then it will be incremented or decremented this is post increment okay or a similar is the case with i minus minus also so first i Do will we be use uh, just, uh sorry to interrupt okay, no problem. So, I'm going to post him uh, post the uh, increment and decrement. Do we use pre increment or do we use post increment in our usual programming if exporting? See, we can use both of them. It depends on how you write the code. Let's say uh, we have uh, started with five. Okay, and okay. Uh, let's say if you want to use it first and then decrement it, then or if we started from let's say six. Okay, if we still started from six, and uh, instead of uh, debugging it here, if we use i minus minus, then it will decrease it uh, later. Okay, so from here it will generate from six to one, six five four three to one like that. Okay, so let's just check it out. Okay, so what is happening here? First, the value of i is equal to 6. Okay, it entered the loop. i is greater than equals to 1. That is true. So it entered, and this is comment, so ignore this. So then we have system.debug, and in the debug, it, it is decrementing it. It is decre decrementing post. That means it is using i first. So first, i is used. i's value was uh, 6. 6. So 6 is used first. After that, it decremented. Okay, so in the next line, if you use system.debug of i, Okay, in the next line, if you use, in this case, in this line, it will generate the value as 5. Okay, but in the same line, it will be always 6. That is the use of post uh, decrement. Now, let's say if you reverse this. Okay, I will just remove this. I will not confuse you guys. So, let's say if we reverse this. Okay, so in this case, what will happen? It will generate from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Because initially only it has decreased the value from 6 to uh, 5. It will become 5. After that, it will go to 4, 3, 2, 1. And when it reaches 1, it becomes equal to. That is true. Again, it comes down and then it will be 0 and then it will become false and then it will, it, it will exit the loop. Okay, so let us check this out again. Okay, so in the second case here, what is happening? It's generating from 5. Okay, why that is happening is because this is pre-increment. It is uh, pre-decrement. It's already decrementing the value of i from five uh, from six to five, and using the decremented value only. Okay, so first the decrement is happening, then the value is being used. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. And if you see, it is also going to zero. In the initial cases, it was not showing zero. Why that is happening is when i becomes one, and uh, so this condition is still true, right? One is equal to one. That means it's true. And then when it, when it comes inside and tries to debug, okay, now what is happening? Minus minus of one. That means it becoming zero. So that is why it zero is coming here. Okay, and uh, one more doubt in line five hundred. Line five hundred. Okay. Five hundred. Yeah. Uh, it's. Uh, statement you gave is while right and uh, then that is greater than equal to what other logical operators we have like yesterday you gave a list right so yes. can we use all of those we can, can use, we use multiple them. multiple operators of and and or in the same loop yeah we can use something like let me go ahead and uh, give you an example let's say greater than equals to um, one okay Let's say if we want to generate from, let's say from 10 to uh, 5, then is greater than or equal to. Inside this, we can give also give another condition. So we can uh, use and and operator, which is uh, and here if we want, we can give another condition also. Okay, so i is greater than or equals to 1, and let's say we have another flag. Okay. 
let's say boolean flag equals to true okay let's say this flag is coming from somewhere in the soql okay from the soql query we are trying to retrieve a field and we check if that field is checked that could be maybe uh, it could be in case of any tickets it could be escalated or not if it's escalated then we want to do some do some calculation okay so in that case we can check here and flag okay so now it will only become true if both the conditions are true if this condition condition one and condition two both of them are true only then it will come inside that is an and operator okay in case of or operator what will happen it will check either of those either this one is true or this one is true if any one of them is true then it will come inside so the resultant will be true so what is the common used operators like in usual programming there's no common use i mean see wherever you need require whichever operators you just combine this calculation and then you do it okay so commonly so there's nothing like commonly used i mean whichever is the uh, scenario according to that business rule you will be according given with the requirements business. yeah yes. it totally depends on the requirement okay. yeah so whatever is the requirement according to that only you have to achieve it okay so achieving the same thing there are multiple ways to do the same thing as well okay so that was about uh, the while loop okay so while loop you have to remember that is an entry control loop and if the condition is not true then it will not enter okay so about one one last doubt yeah please uh, so in the same or condition mm -hmm. uh, how will you uh, debug the flag will you write a separate system dot debug for the flag you can write a separate system dot debug for flag also you can add here plus uh, you can say let's say flag value okay equals to can give here let's say plus flag so it will give you flag value also okay so the uh, so this is this will become an infinite loop as of now this will become an infinite loop because we are not changing flag to false okay so as flag is always true so one of the flag is always true one of the condition is satisfied and it will always be true itself and it will always be in the loop it will never get out of the loop so somewhere we have to change or else what we can do is we have to make it an and operator Okay, so let us try to execute this and let's see what happens. Okay, so it's generating a log. Okay, so flag value is true, 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 true. It is always true, but the value of i is changing. Okay, from five to zero. Okay, so as one of the condition is false, when it becomes zero, that is why it's exiting the loop. Okay, or if we had done something like uh, maybe flag equals to false. Okay, here also we are changing the value. So one of the condition will become false. So here it will just generate five. It will just give five plus flag value equals to true. That is all it will say. Okay, so let us try to run this. okay so as the flag uh, is equal to true inside this we are just making it as false so once we make it as, uh, as false one of the condition is becoming false and as it's an and operator even if one is false i mean one of the condition is false then the whole condition becomes false and that's why it's exiting the loop okay so here we are changing the value of false okay does that answer your question yes Okay. Okay. Uh, sort of. Any questions, or we move forward? No question. Okay. okay. So let's check out what is a do while loop. Okay. So while loop, we we saw that it's an entry control loop, and a do while loop is an exit control loop. Okay. So here in the entry itself, we are checking the condition. The condition is put here in the beginning. in the while, in the do while loop we will put the condition in the end 
okay so in the end the condition will be checked so that means let's say the, uh, let me just uh, not confuse you guys i'll put it separately itself okay so we have something like do and then we have a block for the do okay and then we have condition here okay so what is the difference here is let's say it, it was coming the execution was coming from 510 so it executed this line then it came to do so it will not even check anything it will not even check the condition it will directly enter the loop it will do whatever uh, whatever command or whatever lines we write inside that will be executed and after once it's executed then the condition will be checked and once the condition depending on the condition if it's true or false it will again iterate if this becomes false it will come to the next line so the difference between while and do while loop okay here we have to give something like while okay i might be a little uh, mistaken in the syntax but this is the way how we use it okay i can check out the syntax in apex also and we can give it okay so what is the difference between while and do while loop is that in the in the do while loop at least once the whatever you write inside the loop that that will be executed at least once okay it doesn't matter even if you give false here even if you give false here it will still be executed whatever you write inside it will still be executed once okay so you can say system dot uh, debug um, in every table log okay so let us try to execute i might have some syntax error here so it was expecting some kind of sir after uh, false colon it will work middle work no? hmm. Hmm. okay so now whatever log it was there it is still executing even if the condition is false it will still execute it at least once okay so that is the difference between while and do while loop Okay. if you have some kind of uh, some kind of calculation at least to do once okay then you have to use the while loop i mean do while loop okay but if you want it to be an entry controlled if you want to control the entry in the beginning itself then you have to put the use the while loop okay so this is a unique property in this do while loop which is not available in the even in the for loop so there might be some chances that we might use it it's not very widely used very widely we'll always be using for loop okay most of the times but there might be situations where we need this kind of loop also okay you never know it depends on the business rule or the business requirement whatever they throw at us we have to convert it into some kind of logic okay so we can have some simple examples for this as well okay and do while loop as well so here whatever condition you have to give you have to give it in the exit exit part not in the entry part okay so we can convert the same code in in the form of our uh, do while loop also or if you want we can do something new okay let me just close out of all these things okay So this is a conditional demo. We are placing a lot of classes. So uh, okay, let me try to create a method in this same class. Okay, and we'll be using that method. So what we can say is public, uh, let's say void itself, and we can name it as maybe uh, to while. Demo. Okay, this will not receive any parameter as of now let's see if we need any parameters and in this we can use a do while okay so whatever you write inside the do that will be done at least once okay it will execute this now after this we have to write one while and after the while we have to put one condition and after that we need to end it with a semicolon because if we don't put semicolon it will not recognize whether line has ended or not okay so this is saying that this particular line is ending as of now it's showing an error because we have not put anything inside the condition okay so that should be the problem so it is unexpected token it's it is expecting something before this closing bracket no sir yes sir 
because uh, method name should be start small letter but is capital letter oh. see mm-hmm. initial no, i mean that's yeah. condition right okay go ahead sorry no 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 that's okay that's okay you can you can you can you can tell him like what is the what is your thought no i mean whatever you made made sense because we are not giving any condition inside in the condition we are not giving any any functionality right so i think yeah. that this is one of the reason we are getting here yeah so no, sir only yes. yeah, this do is create problem okay 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 so let us clarify that see first uh, hint is that here you see an exclamation mark that means there's something wrong with this line okay so that is the first hint and apart from that you if you read the error also in the error also it will show you which line the error is generated so it is ex- unexpected token in the line number 25 okay now apart from that let's say if you ignore these two conditions also if you're saying that we have to make it as small letter right that is what you are saying right sort of yes sir yes sir hmm. so there is something called naming convention camel case upper case lower case those conventions are just rituals that we follow okay those are not rules okay, okay, okay. so rule is something that you cannot start a method name or any kind of variable name with an underscore that's a rule if that is broken that will be generating a syntax error okay so okay. now if you see another exclamation mark came here and here it's not able to identify so this identifier whatever we are writing this is not a valid identifier so we cannot use that in the beginning of the identifier we have to use it somewhere inside somewhere in the center we can't even use it in the end okay so that is not valid now apart from that we can also not start a, a identifier name with any number if we do something like this again it will throw an error okay so now if we try to save it it should again throw a invalid see unexpected token number 6 it it will not take it so these are rules okay but if we do upper case lower case that is, that does not matter okay these are just conventions that we follow that means these are just practice best practices that we follow okay okay so if you see now again inside this we have to put some kind of condition that condition should result in any boolean operator either it should it could be true or it could be false okay okay so here we can put some condition let's say what we want to do let's say we want to generate a list of records okay we want to just retrieve the list of records or maybe we want to give a limit uh, let's say 10 records okay we want to generate let 10 records or from top to bottom okay so in that case what we can do is inside this whatever we write that will be executed at least once okay that is our condition here okay so here what we can do is uh, but we don't want to query it like every now and then okay so inside this method we will take a list and in that list we will say some opportunity okay or we have we will not use something common we will use some kind of other record let's say we go for leads this time okay so we say leads uh, it should be lead and then it's a lead list equals to new list or we'll not do something like this we'll just directly query it select um, name and what are what are the fields are there in lead anyone has ever checked out one id will be there and anything else so we have you fields so we have something called company and then we have created by let's say company you can also have created created by okay from um, lead okay so this will give us all the leads from top to bottom all the leads will be there inside our list sir uh, uh sabha if you want a limit we can put limit and uh, huh, give a limited list right yeah easily limit we can put a limit here yes that we can Okay, but I want to do it using the do while loop just to demonstrate here, like how we can use a do while loop. Yeah. Okay, so as of now it's throwing an error. Let's check out why it is doing that. So, select name ID company created by from lead error at row number twenty-seven. No such column created by. Okay. 
selected by dot id let's see if this works okay so this error is gone now now we have to put some kind of condition here okay so what we can do is as long as our um, let's say we have a flag here okay we'll also create a flag okay and in the flag we'll put integer integer flag equals to we'll put lead list dot size okay so that list now this flag has our size okay so whatever is the size of the list so if we want in the query also we can check out what is the size okay so just to clarify now let's say name id blah 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 now here we can give something like count okay and this we can surround here like this let us execute oops duplicate alias id okay let me just count it so field must be grouped by id okay fine we'll group it by id itself okay. mm. some issue with this count id okay so fine we'll see this id dot name id dot that work uh, no this count what it will do it will run the account so let me just try to remove all this this should be fine okay so this is for 42 records are there okay so that is what it's saying that means if you go to leads if you go to all the leads not only open leads it is showing only open leads so i want all the leads okay okay fine so all the uh, uh, at uh, all together it's like 42 leads are there okay so that means our size that means this size equals to 42 Okay, so flag equals to 42 now. So it will run from uh, 42 all the, I mean all the 42 uh, records it will run. Okay, so inside this what we can do is we have to just do one system dot debug, system dot debug, and then we want to just uh, display the value of our lead list. So we'll give something like lead list, and inside the brackets we'll pass the size or we'll pass the counter. So we'll pass the index here. Let's say flag okay and this will display the list of records okay one by one it will display now it will here we are not decrementing this we also have to decrement flag minus minus we have to also do okay so now it will decrease from 42 it will become 41 then 40 then 39 like that it will go till the end okay and in the end it will become uh, here we have to give the condition like till what condition it should keep on iterating so here we have to give something like flag uh, you have to generate it as long as flag is greater than um, zero okay that means till the last index or till the last it has to generate it okay so now if you see this problem is gone because we have added one condition okay so that is a syntax that we have to follow okay now if we save this this should say fine and we just have to create an object and we have to call this method okay all right so we'll just go ahead and we'll create an object for our class so we add that object here and let's say cd any variable name equals to new and then we give an object here again and uh, okay so we have an default constructor we need here so we'll add one default constructor also we'll add one public condition that is it okay so, so for we, every method do we have to have have a, a default constructor so wouldn't it be already available i um, mean in the class uh, see if we put at least one constructor then the system will not put any of the default constructors if we did not have this then we did not need to use this we did not need to okay so if we have a parameterized construct with a constructor with parameters mm -hmm. and we're defining a new method we should add a default constructor right mm -hmm. that 
not really not really if you want you can use the existing this constructor also using this constructor also you can create an object okay but i don't want to initialize this opportunity as of now oh, okay yes okay. because here it will initialize the opportunity also and then i'll have to pass one opportunity record which so I that don't is why to. i was asking so yeah. we can pass any any amount of uh, uh, constructors right default constructors I if we create a new, if we create every new method, can we pass new constructors, default constructors, just because not to initialize like the opportunity you said right here? Uh, yeah, that we can do. Or in another way, what you can do is we can have this method, and let's say we create another constructor. Okay, we'll not have a default constructor. We'll create another constructor, and this list of records. Okay, or this list here will not initialize it inside. We'll take this lay list outside. Okay, so we will take this list and we'll make it as a global variable. Okay, list this will, and inside the constructor we'll initialize this. Okay, so this part we will take it from here, and we'll add inside our. Hmm, then that will not make sense. Hmm. Okay, what other way we can do is we can have another parameterized constructor, and before that we need one. Uh, let's say when we try to call this particular constructor, then in that we can pass our list of records. Okay. So this way, this will be initialized inside our lead list. Okay. Here we can do something like lead list. Equals to whatever parameter we pass here. Okay, let's say here we also we have to give one something to receive the parameter lead, and let's say l. Okay, so lead list we can say as l. Okay, so here we are just creating another uh, constructor which is also a parameterized constructor if we want to use the lead variable then we have to call this constructor if you want to use the opportunity variable then we have to use this constructor okay and depending on the parameters it will automatically differentiate which constructor we are trying to call okay this we have already seen as the signature of this constructor is different it will call this when we pass the list if we pass an opportunity a single opportunity it will call this constructor that so we part have is clear. Pass right? Opportunities list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Not a list. Just a single opportunity. Yeah. As it's a single variable, it's not a collection. So we have to pass a single yes. opportunity here. Yeah. Okay. Is that fine? Yes. Okay. Now let's try to. I'll just save it. So this is saved. So this record uh, we are generating in the constructor and we are passing it here to initialize our variable. Once that is done, we just want to call this method, the second method. Do while demo. That is it. Okay, so here we will call using our uh, variable or using our object dot. As it's not taking any parameter, we don't need to pass any parameter. Okay, so once that is done, what we will do is we will just run our code. Okay, so in this in turn we'll call our method do well demo and this do well demo will do what it will just do debug from uh, all the 42 records it will just debug one by one okay and if we give something like uh, greater than equals to zero in that case when it becomes equal to zero when flag is equal to zero then zero equals to still zero that means this will iterate one more time and it will go to lead list of zero uh, lead list of one okay which will throw an error okay or uh, no 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 i think uh, what we have to do is least lead list dot size okay okay let's try to execute and let's see what happens okay then you will understand better okay so this is saved there's no syntax error as of now we try to execute our log we should get an exception okay so we are getting an exception because it is going out of bounds can anyone tell why it's going out of bounds? Because that means, yeah. You... Go ahead. Let me see. 
uh, one hint is that you can check out what is the value of the flag okay so the value of flag is what 42 okay and the list starts from what zero no 42 41 because yeah. you gave flag uh, in decrement operator right okay okay but here we are post decrementing it right so that flag it will try to uh, this is a long list so i can't show okay just uh, tell me one thing that list is starting from zero right list i mean initially yes, sir. yeah the list index is starting from zero or one it will start from zero right yes so the zero will be the first box one will be the second yes box. and that means yes. it will go from 41 it will not go to 42 yes. yes okay so there is no column for 42 at all there's column from starting from 0 1 2 3 4 5 and will go till 41 okay okay so to correct that what we have to do is we have to make it flag we have to do it minus one okay or what else can we can do is we have to make this flag decrement before our dip okay so here it will already decrement yeah, flag minus minus it will do so flag will become 41 now the 41 will be the last one it will display that record okay now if in case if we want to put this directly inside our index here in that case we have to use an pre decrement like this okay this will also do the same work so it will in uh, auto first it will decrement from the size will decrement from 42 to 41 so it will index the 41 so the 41 is available it will display the 41 part okay and here you have to give something like greater than equal to zero because the last index is zero okay is this confusing i think the previous no. one i mean for me the previous one was sounded I understood the previous one, previous uh, example before this, where you would find yes. This one? Yes. Okay. So let's check out both the, both the ones. Okay. So let's check out this one first. So now here, what is the value of flag? Here the value of flag will be 41. Right. This one is fine, right? The value of flag will be 41. So instead of flag, it will put inside that 41. So it will put the it will display the 41 uh, index whatever is the record in the last box it will display that okay and then we will yeah. okay so this should be okay now we try to execute uh list index out of bounds equal to zero right greater than zero we didn't change the line uh, in 37 in by yeah, this will be greater than zero yes Correct. Okay. So now it will display from top to bottom all the 42 records are coming here. Okay. Now let's say if I don't want to show all the records, I can give some offset. So from the last record, I can say something like uh, as long as it's greater than maybe uh, 35. So it will display only uh, from 41 to 35, 41 to 36, sorry, 36. No, 41 to 35 only. It will go to 35 and then it will go here. Then it will again uh, decrement it. So this will again show 35 only. Okay, okay. So now if we try to execute our log. Okay, so this will generate only six or yeah six records should be there okay okay so it is generating yeah seven records okay that is fine okay so this is 41 40 39 38 37 36 and 35 
okay so this is clear right yes okay. if you want to check out the values also we can also do that so in the end we can just concatenate with let's say flag we can say okay we can say something like flag value or okay flag equals to then we can say here whatever is the value of flag okay so we can keep a count like what is the actual value Okay, so here 41, 40, 39, 38, 37, 46, 36, 35. Okay. Alright, so, so far everything okay? You have, you guys have any doubts, any questions? No, okay, so while and do while we'll see today and tomorrow we'll uh, just reserve for for because there are multiple types of for. Okay, and I don't want to confuse you guys further. So we'll just keep it till this point, okay?